The black shadow started to surround all of them. It slowly encased the group until finally the whole area around them was filled with purple shadows. But then Aaron noticed that the Dalky was also looking around in confusion at the shadows as if it was something unknown to it. Then from behind a claw-like shape of red lines came flying toward the Dalky. It turned around. Sensing the power of the attack, it lifted both of its arms to protect itself, and it placed its arms in an X shape right in front of its face. Just as it was about to look up, four more of the same attack came at it. Although the attacks didn't hurt the Dalky, for the first time in a long while, it had been pushed back from its position by an attack. As soon as Quinn had released his first attack, his shadow cloak had disappeared, and this had revealed him to everyone. The problem was he was low on MC points. He only had 30 of his MC points left, and he needed to use them wisely. Then Aaron spotted Quinn's watch. To her surprise, it currently displayed the number six. Was he hiding his strength the whole time? She shouted. He must have had his reasons, Layla said. How's the little one doing? Rayton asked. He's still sleeping, Borden replied. So it looks like I'll have to deal with this one, Rayton said. The Dalky then went and picked up another piece of scrap metal from the ground that was part of the well's machinery. Let's see how strong you are, the Dalky shouted as he chucked the spear-like object towards Quinn. No, there's no way he can block that on his own, Layla said. Peter stayed by Aaron's side while Vorden and Layla rushed towards Quinn. Shadow control! Using his shadow control skill, Quinn was able to create a black circular shield. But for Vorden, seeing Quinn's action made something click in his head. The spear flew, going at lightning speed, until the tip had touched the black circular shadow. At that moment, the spear looked like it had stopped in midair. Once the spear slowed, Quinn moved to the side. He took the shadow away and allowed the spear to continue moving forward and out of the shadow void. This is perfect, Borden said. Quinn as a vampire was the perfect counter to the Dalky. Borden threw an ice spear at the Dalky. It shattered into a million pieces once it hit the Dalky's body. However, it did catch Dalky's attention, which was what Vorden was aiming for. You are boring, the Dalky said. I'm far more interested in that one. Hey, brat, Vorden shouted. Its skin is too tough. Use an attack that can hurt it on the inside. On the inside? Quinn thought. When the Dalky was a few meters away, it leapt up into the air with its claws out and with both of its hands above its head, ready to smash down. MC 20 of 100. The Dalky could feel its attack slowing down as soon as it touched the strange, shadow-like substance, but by using its considerable strength, it was able to pull its hands from the shadow. MC-10 of 100. His attacks are so strong, I can only take one more, Quinn thought. As the Dalky threw another punch towards him, Quinn moved the shadow and wrapped it around the Dalky's fist. MC-0 of 100. Quinn could see the Dalky's other hand coming straight at him. He looked the Dalky in the eyes. Skill days. Days successful, your opponent has been stunned. He stepped behind the Dalky and prepared all the motions for the hammer strike. He added blood spray to the last part, turning it into the most powerful attack he had, a blood hammer. The Dalky still hadn't moved from his spot, but after a few seconds, he fell on one knee. This was Quinn's answer, an internal attack. When Quinn thought everything was over, a large fist had come out of nowhere, swinging out and hitting him right in the ribs, sending him flying through the air. Critical hit! Your ribs have been broken. The Dalky stood up from the ground and smiled, wiping away the green blood from its mouth. I'm not done with you yet, boy. As Quinn hit the building, his body crashed through the wall, and he fell to the floor. Now that was impressive, the Dalky said with a smile on his face. Did you know the more a Dalky gets hurt, the stronger they get? When the Dalky tried to take another step forward, it felt something akin to a force field that was pulling him back and slowing him down. Sill had taken over. Are you trying to take Quinn away from me? He yelled. You earthlings are nothing like we were told. And you're not even adults, you're just students, the Dalky said. The whole situation was filling the battle crazy Dalky with happiness. At that moment, Quinn was just lifting himself off the ground. 100 millimeters of blood used. Blood bank is now empty. Vorden, how long do you think you can hold him? Layla asked. At the same time, she saw Quinn lifting himself off the ground and the sun continuing to set behind him. Even if it turns to night, how is Quinn going to be able to fight such a thing? It's just too strong, Layla thought. Then, she seemed to recall something Quinn had told her in the past, that he seemed to get stronger with each person's bloody drank. The next thing Layla did, she grabbed one of the arrows from her quiver and used the tip to make a small cut on the palm of Aaron's hands. Then, using the bowl of ice, 
she allowed the blood to drip into it. Once there was a good amount of blood, she continued to do the same using her blood. Next up was Peter. The Dalki continued to move towards them, and the sweat was running down Syl's face. The stupid dinosaur is strong, Syl said to Vorden and Rayton. Suddenly, Layla appeared by his side. She created a small cut on the back of Vorden's leg. When the bowl was finally full, she started to make her way towards Quinn. Just what is that girl doing? The Dalki thought. Here, drink this, Layla said as she handed over the bowl full of blood. He took the bowl and gulped it down in one go. 65 of 65 HP. Blood bank has been filled. Two points have been added into agility. One free stat point has been added. You are no longer affected by sunlight. All stats have returned to normal. After consuming the blood in the bowl, Quinn felt like a whole new person. I can't hold on any longer, I'm too tired, Syl whined. The struggle against the Dalki was too much for him. He wasn't fighting obsessed like Rayton, so he gave up control and left Vorden in charge once again. The Dalki could suddenly move one foot in front of the other again. The amount of force it felt being exerted on itself was like nothing compared to before. Quinn, seeing this happen, knew he was in trouble. He put the free stat point into agility without hesitation. It now brought his agility stat up to a total of 23. Then, using all the speed he could and activating his boots' wind walk ability, he rushed over to where the Dalki was. Moving at an incredible speed, Quinn managed to cover the distance from the building to where the others were in only a few seconds. As soon as he was in range, he cast another blood swipe. The attack ripped through the sand and was heading straight for his target. The Dalki pulled his head back at the last second, and the attack skimmed right past its nose. But how is this possible? I'm certain you should be at the death's door by now, the Dalki said. The Dalki charged towards him. A swing made its way to his head. Quinn ducked down and threw out a punch performing blood spray at the same time, taking advantage of the close range. 60 of 65 HP. The fight continued in this fashion, with Quinn avoiding each of the Dalki's attacks. And whenever it would get too close, he would use his blood abilities to push it away. 48 of 65 HP. Quinn had to be sure not to get a hit from the Dalki. Another claw was coming at him, and it looked like he was about to get hit. He had no choice but to perform the flash step and appear directly behind the Dalki. Damn, I can only use the flash step one more time, Quinn thought. But the Dalki was getting equally frustrated. You little Keenan, I will squash you! It lifted both fists and smashed them into the ground. It didn't seem like an attack made to hurt anyone. The rocks just lifted into the air and quickly fell back to the floor. It was just a way for it to let out a little bit of frustration. Quinn had taken a few steps back away from the Dalki and quickly opened up his status screen. MC points 40 of 100. This was what Quinn was waiting for. He was waiting for his MC points to return so he could use the shadow ability again. The Dalki was surprised to see that Quinn was the one coming towards it. So you finally decided to attack, I see, it shouted. Quinn flung his hand out with his fingers held together, casting a single red line of aura. Then before it could move away from him, the shadow underneath his feet started to move. The shadow reached out and grabbed the blood aura holding it in place, and now the other end of the shadow was attached to Quinn's hand. The two opponents were still quite a distance away from each other, but Quinn still swung out the shadow side. Seeing this, the Dalki wasn't afraid. It was slightly confused, actually, as the scythe would be able to reach him. Suddenly, as the scythe was swung outwards, it seemed like it was starting to extend. With Quinn's new attack, combining his shadow control with the blood swipe, hit the Dalki's body. 47 of 65 HP, 35 of 100 MC. The Dalki's blood continued to drip from its side and fall into the sand, but now the spike on its back was pulsating faster and glowing brighter. Seeing the Dalki injured and bleeding made Quinn feel excited. He charged forward once again. Come on, attack me again, the Dalki shouted. And Quinn did just that. The attack was a success, and it caused the Dalki to fall onto the ground. Its forearms were dripping with green blood, but it ignored its wounds. It just stood up once again and charged forward. At this point, even Quinn was starting to worry. He went to attack once again with his shadow scythe. Only this time, the Dalki managed to jump and avoid the blow. Did it just get faster? Quinn said. You seem to have forgotten, the Dalki said. I told you already, the more we are hurt, the stronger we become. I can't win, Quinn said. Even with my full power, it's still too strong. Snap out of it, Quinn, the system shouted in his head. You only became a vampire a couple of weeks ago, and you think you can already take out an enemy like this? 
You will grow in due time, but the important thing right now is to survive. I can do this! I have to do this! Quinn shouted. Running forward and not changing his direction, he went straight ahead. Then, just as the Dalki was prepared to attack, flash step! He used his skill, allowing him to avoid the strike and go right past the Dalki. What is he doing? Layla thought. Should we run? Is that why he's coming towards us? I need blood! Quinn yelled. I can't fight the Dalki like this. I need more blood! Layla didn't ask any questions and immediately started to make another cut on the palm of her hand, and Aaron had already formed another ice bowl. But when they all looked up, their faces had dropped entirely, for the Dalki was already right behind Quinn. Not only had its strength gotten higher, but so had its speed. Everything about the Dalki had improved. It was too late for Quinn to notice, and the Dalki was already mid-attack. The fist flew forward and penetrated right through flesh and bone, going straight through his body and out to the other side. Bright red blood could be seen dripping onto the ground with a fist through his body. But it wasn't Quinn's body that was penetrated. The person who had been hit was Peter. Quinn, Peter said weakly, coughing out blood that filled his mouth. Please forgive me. His body fell to the ground and hit the soft sand. His blood continued to soak the sand, turning it red. At the moment, Quinn needed help the most. The only one brave enough to step up and come to Quinn's side was Peter. However, it came at a terrible price. Hi, Quinn here. Wondering what happens next? If you want to jump the queue and unleash all episodes, click on the link here and install the Pocket FM app.